All right, so uh, we we'll begin the meeting. Um, I'd like to thank you for attending and those who have joined us uh, virtually. Um, we won't be that long here. I don't think there's any real issues on it. So I'll call on uh, our senior engineer, Tom uh, Brennan, to take us through the programme. Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks, Kuhirok. Um The the roads program, which was it was circulated to you there last week, and there's associated maps with it as well for the restoration uh, maintenance and restoration improvement program. Um, I'll just run through it. There's a lot of pages in it. I'm going to run through it now very very quickly. And if you have any questions, uh, uh, I can take them afterwards. <clears throat> but in total, does uh, a grant allocation of nearly 57,000, 57 million so far this year for roads in Sligo, County Sligo. And that's made up of 40 million for, from Transport Infrastructure Ireland, which will be mostly for the um, N4 uh, scheme and some of the other uh, major schemes that are in development in Sligo, in, including the uh, N4, N15 uh, Sligo uh, Urban Improvement Scheme in the town. And uh, there's 1.33 million of our own resources allocated there as well. Um, just on page two there, then there's um, just a list of our own resources. Um, like we, we put about 810,000 to public lighting, Piers and Harbors 40,000, Sligo Port 109, um, beach maintenance 39,500, uh, public convenience is 30,000, coastal erosion 25,000. There's four drainage schemes then in the county and there's 38,000 assigned to them. Uh, burial grounds, maintenance across the county, 57 cemeteries, cemeteries 17,800 allocated to that. Um, and open space in the county area, there's 48,000. And uh, there's a total of 2.3 million then allocated to own resources um, uh, works. Um, and I'll just mention the ones that are probably uh, particular in particular to this this particular municipal district. Um, the next few pages then deal mostly with the TII major schemes, including the N4, which is in this municipal district, which is ongoing at the moment and is due to open at some stage this year. Um, the, 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 as I said, the next few pages detail those major schemes. Obviously, the N17 knock to Colony upgrade is a major uh, development uh, schemes under development um, in this municipal district and will have a big impact in the years ahead. Um, the on page um, page seven, then we just mentioned overlay schemes, which are mostly in the north of the county at the moment on the N15 and the N16, but we're continuing to develop. Uh, an overlay scheme on the N59 at Owen Beg, and we hope to um, uh, carry out more design work on that this year with a view to get money later this year or early next year. And there's always on the bottom of page seven there, there we always talk, there, there is a ongoing uh, uh, program of road safety improvement schemes on national roads, which we're, which we're undertaking at the moment uh, at specific locations. Uh, the next pages eight and nine deal with uh, national road and national sec national primary road and national secondary road maintenance, and um, those allocations are mostly the same as last year. Uh, now, however, we do make applications to TII for additional monies um, each year at specific locations. So last year, I think we got maybe 150,000 of additional monies for general maintenance, and something like half a million then for pavement repairs. Um, so on page uh, 10, then we just start dealing with the non-national roads and the two main grants in under, I suppose, page 11 in, dictate how or indicate how the grant is, is the various grants are divided up across the county among the various municipal districts. Um, the restoration maintenance grant then is primarily for surface dressing for roads, which um, uh, would, I suppose, uh, be still in reasonable condition, but you'd be trying to get them repaired before they deteriorate and would uh, cost a significant amount of money to repair. Um, the road restoration, the restoration maintenance grant in this municipal district uh, is programmed to do works at 63 locations and to uh, uh, surface stress nearly 75 kilometres of roadway. And those, those locations are detailed on pages 12 and 13, and they're also um, highlighted on the map that was distributed and they're colored blue on that map. Um, the big money then is for the restoration improvement program, which is the strengthening of roads that are in poor condition. 
and there's a total countywide grant of 7.3 million, which is about, I think, 6% up on last year. And I think this municipal district gets about five, uh, gets about, let me say, I think gets um, of, of that grant, it gets uh, nearly 5 million, yeah, 5 million in total. And that will be repairing, doing works at 47 locations throughout the municipal district and repairing about 43 and a half kilometers of work of, of roads. So um, pages 14, 15 uh, detail the locations where those repairs and works will be carried out. The discretionary grant then and how it's allocated is detailed in pages 16 and 17. And a uh, discretionary grant is about the same as last year. And that's um, spread over just about of the 2.29 million countywide allocation is 1.2, nearly 1.3 of that allocation to this municipal district. And how it's broken down is detailed on page 16. And that's used mainly for road repairs across the municipal district, portal repairs, uh, bridge works, uh, winter maintenance, gritting. Uh, for surveys on roads and for um, various various contingencies works like signs and and uh, items like that. So um, page 17 then details how our own resources are spread out across the um, uh, municipal district and uh, there's 367,000 of own resources money there spread spread basically across the the district uh, or the municipal district and that's spent primarily on I suppose. Uh, local road repairs. Um, the footpath enhancement program then is, is detailed on page 17, and um, that uh, does each municipal district gets 100,000, and that comes from local property tax receipts and from development contributions. And the where it's proposed to carry out footpath repairs is detailed at the bottom of page 17. So there's um, about seven locations detailed there. Um, I'd just like to, you know, just say as well that we are getting grants from the National Transport Authority at the moment for, I suppose, active travel works, and included in those grants, we're targeting uh, footpath, uh, new footpaths, and footpath repairs throughout the county. So that particular grant might be supplemented by other works um, across the county uh, from other grants. Um, page 18 then uh, deals with specific improvement grants, and the one grant in this municipal district is the. R284 at Glan, where we're, we have for the last number of years been carrying out strengthening works. And we have spent of the order of, I think, about half a million along the R284 in widening the verge and making the road safe for um, vehicles possibly used to go off the edge and um, end up in the field. So uh, uh, the that grant there is a continuation of those works, and there's 120,000 euros for that. Um, the Pages 18 and 19 deal, deal with the Eastern Garvogue Bridge and Western Service Road, which are Sligo Town. Um, page 20 then just details winter maintenance, which was the money that money spent across the county. And 21 then details safety improvement works for for this year. And works to be carried out this year will be at Ballymote Secondary School, Clash de Murrah. Um, in Colani, there's some sight lines to be improved. Uh, on the Ballinar Road um, in Turbot Curry, there's uh, the provision of footpaths uh, and facilities for vulnerable road users. In um, Drynahan in Enniscrone, then there's uh, junction improvements. Um, and uh, in Glenavu, then there's sight lines to be improved on, on a particular roadway out there. Um, again, I just the drainage grant then is a new grant brought in in recent years for doing drainage repairs um, on local roads. And there's a countywide grant of 573,000, the same as last year. And of that 573, three, nearly 400,000 of it goes into this municipal district. And the locations where it's planned to spend or carry out works under that heading are detailed on page 22. So again, these are to fix local drainage problems and to maintain roads and, and prevent the deterioration of roads due to poor drainage. Um, again, the on page 23, top of page 23, then is the we just talk about the local improvement schemes. We've for local improvement schemes, we generally be getting about a quarter of a million per year, which might allow us to do maybe six or seven schemes throughout the county. Um, 
So we're waiting for a grant this year from the Department of Rural and Community Affairs and assume at some stage that that grant will come down, come, come down to us and uh, we can allocate that then accordingly. Uh, community involvement schemes then, we've, we have another significant grant this year of 701,000 and we've had that allocated to approximately 16 schemes already. Um, so um, that grant is proving, I suppose, it's, it's, it's helped us to consider amount to work on, on cul-de-sacs uh, throughout the county. Uh, page 24 then, and I mentioned, I suppose I mentioned earlier, active travel measures. We did get a grant 1.04 million last year. Um, uh, last last August, the end of August, we got that grant and that those monies are to be spent between last year and this year. And we the where it's been spent is detailed on page 24. And as I said, that does include footpaths and safety works throughout the county, including in places like Enniscroan and uh, Gurchin, Monastraden, uh, Colani uh, and so on and Ballymote. So those works, if they're not done, they will be carried out later on. Um, and again, we're expecting more active travel grants in the near future uh, coming from the National Transport Authority. So I think what we're expecting is, is possibly a five year program of focused uh, monies for active travel. And we'll just have to see where that's focused. It, I think the emphasis might be on towns and villages and maybe maybe urban areas. Um, page 25 then details the climate change adaptation grant, which we got last year. Uh, that came towards the end, again, that grant came towards the end of the summer and it was used to um, repair roads that were damaged uh, uh, in very uh, difficult weather. Um, severe weather, which uh, we had there uh, in the middle of last summer. So we carried out work at maybe about maybe seven or eight locations throughout the county, uh, including some in this municipal district, including at, at, at Cache, uh, Finla, uh, in Bullinadden, Port Hinch. And some of this, most of this work is done, but a few few locations um, remain to be carried out maybe early this year. Uh, um, now, there's another call for the department have another um, a grant call issued. Uh, they're making 15 million available nationally uh, under the heading of climate change adaptation grants. And that call came down in the last few days. So we will be making a funding application under that heading in the next couple of weeks. And again, it's for, uh, I suppose, climate uh, uh, mitigation or adaptation uh, to I suppose, make the whole road infrastructure more resilient to climate change. And it will be looking at maybe roads that flood or embankments that that are are um, susceptible to uh, slippage in bad weather, um, or maybe coastal areas that might, where roads are suspect to, or are susceptible to damage. So um, we'll, be, we'll be having a look at that over the next couple of weeks. So if there's any any particular areas that maybe you might have in mind, let us know for that grant. Um, again, the pages 5, 26 and 27 and 28 detail our bridge program. We repair maybe anything up to maybe a dozen bridges a year uh, or more with that bridge program. And we have this year a grant of about 430,000 and nearly 300,000 of that is being spent in this municipal district and it will repair approximately 10 bridges and those bridges are detailed in the top of page 28. Um, so we've done a lot of work over the years in keeping our bridge stock up to standard. Um, page 29 then details piers and maintenance, piers, piers and harbours maintenance. Um, there's 40,000 allocated towards just general maintenance of piers and harbours across the county and in particular we're about to apply for works to be carried out um, or repair, for monies for works to be carried out in Eastkey Pier and for works to be continued on Aquas Pier in this year. So um, we are optimistic of getting grants um, in the next month or six weeks and to be able to, to carry out those works um, um, very promptly in, in, in the summer. Um, coastal protection measures then are talked about on page 30. Again, this is a an ongoing issue where uh, uh, just maybe having, having discussions with the OPW regarding uh, studies to see how we can de deal with the, um, I suppose, coastal erosion due to climate change. 
uh, especially in areas like Strand Hill and maybe along the coastline and uh, uh, maybe the coast road in Eski in Eski as well. We'll be looking at that. Uh, page 31 then deals with uh, just mentions all the burial grounds is um, uh, 50, about nearly 60 cemeteries across the county and I think about 43 of them are in this municipal district. So um, there's a considerable amount of work then done, done by the areas of maintaining those. Uh, public conveniences are mentioned on page 32. And again, this year we're making a particular effort to uh, to have a very high standard of maintenance of public conveniences at the beaches across the county, including at Ennis Grown, given that we probably will have a lot more staycations this year than in previous years. Mm -hmm. And again, the same goes for beach maintenance there mentioned on page 32. Mm -hmm. Our terrial, terrial drainage then, page 32 again, we have four drainage schemes and we car annually we carry out maintenance works on those. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm just really going through what deals with this municipal district. Public lighting, again, there's considerable budget for that, but it, it's all used up in, in paying for electricity and repairs. Um, CLAR schemes then, CLAR funding, we get maybe something of the order of, um, you know, 200,000 each year for CLAR. And I understand there's a call for CLAR applications just down the last few days. So we'll be making applications under that heading in the next, uh, in, in, in the coming weeks. So I, I think um, that's basically all I have to say, really the, I think page 35, the last few pages there are just detail this year's allocations compared with last year. So um, I'm here to answer any questions and I think the area engineers and uh, Paddy Hughes, Senior Secretary Engineer, is online there, uh, who will be available to answer any questions as well, so very detail. So, thanks. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Brendan for taking us through that uh, report, and I'd like to thank Paddy Hughes and Desi Sloyne and Joe Devaney and Davis, and all the engineers that ha have uh, consulted widely with councillors in forming this roads programme. Um, you're appreciated uh, for listening to our complaints uh, and I want to thank you for that and I'm sure I speak for every councillor when I do that. So I'll open to the floor now and Dara Mulvey has indicated he wants to speak. Uh, thanks, Cahir. Look, um, I'd firstly to thank Mr. Brennan for the the uh, run through of the programs um, and I want to concur with what you said to thank the, the three engineers, David Golden, Desi Sloyne and Joe Devaney and uh, the overseers we have and the outdoor staff, the, the, the men we meet in the pickup trucks on the road, um, you know, they're certainly we're, we're very, very lucky with the quality of work and, and the, the workmanship that they carry out. And unfortunately, the, the engineers will tell you, you know, if they got more money, they'd certainly do more work. But I know we're constrained by, I suppose, the allocation we get from the department on what we do. But with the amount of funding we get, they actually carry out great work. And thank Paddy Hughes as well. Um, I suppose just one or two of the issues, and I welcome um, Tom Brennan's report there. I suppose one of the questions is um, the N17. I know the, um, there's a certain amount of concern with certain people regarding areas of constraints, and is that on schedule, or I suppose what time period are we looking at um, as regards certain areas maybe coming out of the area of constraints? Um, that would be one one question that I have. Um, just another one. Is there any specific fund for um, carrying out maintenance work or any specific grants for footpaths and roads in local authority housing estates? Um, I know I'm just thinking that uh, I get a lot of representations and from the likes of Ballymote, Marin Park, Hillview Drive, and I know, um, you know, in other areas like Connolly, Park and Mountain, Park and Tubbacurry, where you have all the states, and I know Councillor Connolly and Tubbacurry, you know, will speak on the Tubber ones, that a lot of these estates that are over 40, 50 years constructed, the road surfaces in some of the local authority estates are very much in need of repair. I know particularly in Hillview Drive and Ballymote, the road surface is worn away. Some of the footpaths are 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 you know, the carbon is coming loose and the brick paving is coming loose and, you know, a small amount of money would do a lot in the estates 
And is there any hope of setting up, we'll say, a maintenance scheme or a, some sort of a scheme that we could allocate X amount of funding to local authority estates? Because sometimes they're, you know, they're, the, the age of the work that has been carried out is just coming up that they need, you know, resurface and works. Um, I think it's, it's well over 10 or 12 years since we had any class three money. So that's an area that I'd like to see if we could get something, um, some specific funding for. Um, just as well on, to, on page 23 there, the LIS and the CIS schemes, I suppose it just shows how successful those schemes are when you see the CIS scheme was snapped up so quick this year. And I think it's, you know, I suppose it's it's money for roads that probably never would get work carried out on them. And it's great to see that there is such an uptake on them. And I think certainly every chance that we get and the more we get for CIS schemes, there's great interest amongst communities out there. Um, and it's unfortunate maybe that not more people can get in on the schemes, but I suppose it's in fairness and compliment Kathleen Gain on the work she does with them. Everyone is notified and it's, you know, the people that apply and come back to her, get, the work is, is carried out. And it makes an awful difference to some of these roads that they'll get resurfaced and work that they're kind of no need for any work then for 20, 25 years. Um, also, maybe just to compliment the bridge repair teams when we see the some of the bridges that have been repaired i know under val Baines and that they've been excellent you know people have said it to me that they've seen some of the bridges and they're, they're they nearly think that they're built from new they're brought back to such um a standard again um i welcome that nta the the national uh, active travel grant i think that's a great thing and you know hopefully that along with the climate change one will I suppose we've we've never seen more than now the amount of people that are walking and cycling due to the pandemic. And I think it's every place that we can get people out and about. It's not alone is it a health and fitness. It's a mental health issue that people can get out in the fresh air and walk and has been never more needed, I suppose, than now. So I suppose any schemes that we can get funding for extra footpaths or cycleways, I certainly would uh, welcome it. And um, just again to thank... Um, all the engineering staff and that and there are one or two roads I know that I don't see on the scheme but look I'll, I'll mention them maybe with the specific engineers because there's one section of, of road there the L1601 from um, the N17 to Temple House um, a section of that was resurfaced six years ago and the other section isn't so and just Pleading with the executive, if there's any funding or any road that there's an issue that hasn't been able to avail of works this year, that that section, it's an extremely busy road servicing the factories, the schools, the Mart and Ballymore, people from West Sligo, Connery, that's the road they use. And, you know, while I welcome half of the road was resurfaced, you know, it's six years since it was done, uh, you know, the residents and the people living along that road, I think, you know, I've been contacted on numerous occasions by them to ask, could they get the second section of that done? So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Kerr. Look. Tom, do you want to take that first? Um, thanks, Kerr. Um, thanks, Councillor um, Mulvey, for your compliments there. Um, the, you, just, you mentioned the N17, and I suppose page four of the report just mentions that the I suppose at the moment they're assessing numerous options and it appears as if they, they're anticipating the team are anticipating that an emerging preferred option is expected to be available towards the end of 2021 so that might give some clarity as to where the route might be going um you mentioned footpaths then in local authority housing estates <clears throat> once those housing estates are completed i suppose the roads and the contractor moves away, the roads are taken over by the roads department, the roads of footpaths. So they fall into the roads department's, I suppose, maintenance budgets. Um, so basically it's, it's you know, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the existing budgets we, we have to do any repairs there. The, the only thing that might happen sometimes is in very old or older estates, if the housing department um, are doing a major refurbishment of the estate, um, there may be monies available from the housing section to do general 
environmental upgrades in the estate, including footpath repairs, but that would only be in very specific states and wouldn't be very often. So like Connolly Park now at the moment in Turbo Curry, there might be an example of that. But um, so it's it's coming out of the general budget, so we just have to um, put footpaths and roads in those estates on the roads programme as best we can, you know. Um, I think, and I will, will note the, I think you mentioned the road there in Temple House, so the area staff will just have to note that and see if they can include it in future roads programmes. Councillor Taylor, you have indicated. Do you want to um, thank, thank, thank you, Chair, um, and my apologies for, for not being in the chamber. Um, look, I, I too would like to thank Tom um, and Paddy Hughes um, and, and all our area engineers, um, David, Desi and Joe, um, the, all the road staff, um, and I suppose in particular the out, outdoor staff for you know, the work that they have done throughout this difficult period over the last year. Um, when when the world is, is is a complete different place, so I, I'd like to commend them on that and say well done to them. And um, and there's there has been such a high standard of work being carried out over the over the past year, um, and it's great to see that as well. And um, I too, you know, uh, believe that the CIS money and the LIS monies are very very important at the moment. Um, we we I know we don't see too much. We see maybe on average two hundred and fifty thousand for LIS money. We, we'd like to see more. I know there's a lot of schemes that didn't get in on the CIS, um, and I know we're doing a list for that, and we're sending it to the department as well. So so we're hopeful of that. So I would like to see CISs and LISs being kept high on the list of priorities. Um, our regional roads, um, and, and while I do commend uh, all the work that's been going on and, and I commend the budgets, and I know, as, as Councillor Mulvey has said, that we'd like to have more, um, I, I do think we're not far from serious problems with a lot of our regional roads. Um, I welcome the money again for the regional road down at, at, at Glan, um, but I, I think we're, we're not far from running into problems with the R293, the R294, 95 and 96. Um, I, I would like to see these regional roads be made a priority over the coming years as well, um, because we are not far from running into very, very serious problems. But look, all in all, I, I, I welcome, I welcome the money, I welcome the budget for the year ahead. Um, I thank the staff, and again, I'd like to um, thank Kathleen Kane for the work she does on the CISs and, and, and all the admin staff as well. So, um, well done and, and a good year. And look, we look forward to maybe things being different. Um, for the coming year, certainly we're going to we're going to stay the same for the next number of months. But hopefully, after that, things will be different. Thank you, Councillor Milani. Thanks, Cahir. Look, apologies for being late. I just want to thank Tom for his report and thank him for all his work and and to thank Paddy Hughes as well and David and Desi and Joe and um, all our outdoor staff. And I suppose one of the best examples you could find. And what our outdoor staff can do is to visit the care park in Ballymote and see the quality of the work there and see how it has been finished and turned out on time. So I think that's there as a tribute to everyone that worked in it. Um, look, at, I'd just like to welcome the Verge Sentinel on the R284. I know firsthand all the cares and trucks that went off that for the last 20 years. And the Parts of that's done now are acknowledged to be safe, and it's it was high quality work done there by um, Michael Cohen and his team, and I think it's a great credit to them. I'd also like to acknowledge the Act of Travel Grant for uh, the footpath in Giva, and the footpath enhancement program. There's uh, funding coming to Ballinafad for that. I'd also like to agree with Councillor Mulvey and Councillor Taylor on the LIS and the CIS. We certainly need a lot more money on both. I'm not sure what we need on, on the LISs, but we could take 1.2 million per annum, no problem on the CISs. And we're dealing with roads that that's, will be untouched in this that they're coming under the CIS scheme. So I think this is something that that we have to fight for. And um, I know I've been lobbying um, RTD on it, and uh, I think we all need to be lobbying anyone with influence at national level. Uh, also to welcome the, the bridge repair at um, the funding, the 26,000 for the bridge repair at Firehouse. And, um, you know, just to say that um, I do agree with Councillor Taylor, 
the regional roads does need to be kept in in good quality shape because these are the arteries that takes all our traffic and if we let them into disrepair we're we're in difficulty then again just to thank everyone and thank you Carl. um councillor connelly are you okay yeah i just like to add my thanks to mr brannan and to the three area engineers and uh, the outdoor staff i'm not going to uh, rehash what the other councillors have said here but uh, I would like to also mention the CIS and LIS schemes. The CIS schemes, uh, we haven't got a lot of them in the Tupperwari area this particular time, but is there a chance that there will be extra money added to this? Will there, will there be extra money added to the CIS schemes? I know you have an application in, sorry, have an application in far more money, but What's the chances of that happening? Because uh, I know personally I have, I have an awful lot of uh, CIS uh, forums filled out and uh, applications sent in. So thanks very much and thanks very much again for for the report. Um, just on CIS schemes, yeah, we've we've submitted or we've informed the department that we've allocated our monies for this year and we've sent them a supplementary list requesting funding. So it depends on whether they have funding left over then from other counties. I think the chief executive signed the letter himself. So um, so we just have to wait and see. Um, I wouldn't really have a feeling as to what. Sometimes there might be money left over nationally, but it's good to be letting them know that we're, um, that we're allowed to spend that money and it goes to, a, you know, it's well spent. So it might help us help to improve allocations in future years. Uh, does any of the local engineers want to come in and praise the councillor for working so tirelessly with you? <laughs> <laughs> Silence. Oh, the Lord, Lord. You can hear us there, you can. So I, I, I'll just say something. I'll just say, like, you know, um, just when well, you have mentioned it, to thank all the councillors and that, as far as I can see, there's a great partnership approach to getting the work done and um, and to the uh, Paddy Hughes and the area engineers and the outdoor staff. So. No, thanks, thanks to you. Thanks. Yeah, I just raised one issue. Uh, can you, maybe you could tell us how many LIS app schemes are in the pipeline, the applications made. Maybe you haven't that information, oh, but if you haven't, you might make it available to us. Yeah, we can and, make that available. And uh, the other thing is in relation to, I know that Desi Sloyne is no, knows what I'm going to say about and and Joe Devaney knows. Uh, it's a bridge that for the last six or seven years that I've been trying to get some works done that's up at the top of Dunflynn. It's a, it's a narrow bridge that can't be accessed by um, tanker. The, the local farmers have to go on a seven mile tour. I know that you know it is comes from Mulvey too. And I, I, it, it continuously fails to get to get done. But And it's not a, a huge issue. It needs to be widened by about two foot so that the tractors can access it. And it, it's a road that if there was an accident on the in 59 that would be used as a, as a diversion uh i'd ask mr brennan to, to have a look into that bridge desi do you want to come in on that i know that you inspected it at one stage yeah i looked at it it's it's one that could be widened but it'd be it'd be in val Bain's area now yeah, it's, it's, it's Val. Val is looking after that program, so we we'll just we we'll just ask yeah. Val to have a look at it and see what. That that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. But I would like to see it, and and it wouldn't it, it wouldn't yeah. cost an awful lot of money, Desi, to do it, would it? Uh, I'd have to go back and look at it. It's a few years now since I had to look at that, but um, it's it's definitely one that's doable, and it's it yeah, it wouldn't cost a fortune to do it, and it's it's one that could be included, all right, yeah. And were you cutting me when you told me you were prioritising it? <laughs> oh, it was. It was going to be done only for I. I got changed, Michael. It was the number one on the list. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I I fell for that one. Uh, just just just. Um, we're 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 getting used to them now as well. Oh man. Um, Mr. I'm just going to say that generally that that bridge program is to repair 
bridges at the yard, we seldom include for widening bridges unless there's a need. So that's probably why it hasn't been done, you know. So widening is a little bit, it's a different sort of works to do. Just a question there regarding LAS is there's one, but there's a reserve list with a funding value of 1.2 million. And there's probably more applications if we, um, like we're getting about a quarter of a million a year. So there's five year program. There's about five years worth of work out there, you know, so. And uh, I suppose all councillors would agree that people that applied for CISs this year and because it was taken up so, so quickly, they'd get prioritised for the next funding, whether it's allocated this year or next year, that there will be in a queue that they will get done. Is it, would we agree on that? So can I have a proposal so for the Jar Mulvey's proposal and Councillor Connolly has seconded. And uh, I have a few uh, sympathy notices. Is there any other business? Are we all happy to go with that? And uh, chair, chair, chair. Yes, Councillor Taylor. Chair, could I just um, um, uh, send apologies for Councillor Baker? Maybe you gave them before I came in on the meeting, Councillor Baker and Councillor Queenan. I wish you their apologies. Um, Councillor Queenan wanted to thank Joe Devaney personally for the Rose programme this year, and he can't be here. <laughs> Well, he did. He actually did say that as well. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Councillor Mullally. Yeah, just uh, I think Councillor Connolly and myself haven't got road maps. The, the 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 ones with the numbers, and they're very handy if you're putting in a motion. Would it be possible to to absolutely? To, okay, thanks, Tom. There's no other business, so we'll conclude the meeting. And I'd like to thank Claude. And does Tom have anything? Okay, Tom. No. No, that's all right. All good. Thanks for joining us uh, from the airways. You're very welcome. <laughs>